My noble believing brothers and sisters, last week we mentioned the explanation of Allah's verse. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَقُمُ غَيُّرَ نَعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَى قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيُّرُ مَا بِأَنْفُسِهِمْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ السَّمِيُّنَ عَلِيمٌ And that is because Allah, He will never change the good condition of a people, that which He has bestowed upon them, until they themselves change that condition. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-hearer, and nowhere. Today we continue by directing the hearts and the attention of the brothers and the sisters. May Allah wa ta'ala have mercy and bless all of you to the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Lahum mu'akkibatu min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfihi yahfadhunahu min amri la inna Allah la yugayru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayru ma bi anfusihim وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِنْ وَالِ So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, my noble believing brothers and sisters, begins here by saying, لَهُمْ مُؤَكِّبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَذُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ For each person, there are angels in succession in front and behind him. So why does Allah appoint angels in front and behind an individual? Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, يَحْفَذُونَهُ بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ They guard him by the command of Allah. So the great Mufassir, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Si'di rahimahullahu ta'ala mentioned in his tafsir concerning the statement of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala يَحْفَذُونَ بَدَنَهُ وَرُوحًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَنْ يُرِيدُهُ سُوء that is that the angels, they safeguard this individual's body and soul. What do the angels do? Upon the command of Allah, they safeguard the individual's body and the individual's soul, protecting him from whomsoever wants to cause him harm. Then Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Si'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he continued by saying, يَحْفَذُونَ عَلَيْهِ أَعْمَالَهُ وَهُمْ مُلَازِمُونَ لَهُ دَائِمًا فَكَمَا أَنَّ عِلْمَ اللَّهَ مُحِيطٌ بِهِ فَاللَّهُ كَدْ أَرْسَلَ هَأُولَاءِ الْحَفَظَ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ بِهَيْثُ لَا تَخْفَ أَحْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَعْمَالُهُمْ وَلَا تُنْسَ مِنْهَا شَيْءٍ They are going to safeguard for him his deeds. They are going to safeguard for him his deeds. And they are always with him. So just as Allah's knowledge encompasses him, Allah sends these keepers. And who are these keepers? They are the angels. To do what? To watch over the faithful slaves. So that nothing from their situation or deeds are hidden. And none of it will be forgotten. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala mentions next, Listen carefully, brothers and sisters, young and old. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will not change the condition of a people. And this is similar to the statement that we mentioned last week. Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Si'di rahimahu Allah Ta'ala continued in his explanation by saying مِنَ النِّعْمَةِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَالْرَغَةِ الْعَيْشِ That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will not change the condition in terms of favors. And in terms of goodness and affluential prosperity, then he tabaraka wa ta'ala said next, Hatta yugayru ma bi anfusihim until they change their state themselves. So Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Si'di explained here, Bi an yantakilu min al iman ila al kufri, wa min al ta'a ila al ma'asiyah, wa min al shukr al ni'am illah. And that is by moving away from belief to disbelief. Similar to last week. Moving away from iman to kufr. And from obedience to disobedience. Or moving away from being people who are thankful for the blessings of Allah to people who reject these blessings. What will be the end result? Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Si'di rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, 
فيسلبهم الله عند ذلك إياء. So Allah تبارك وتعالى takes away these favors from them because of their ungratefulness, because of their disobedience, because of leaving iman for kufr and disbelief, and leaving the sunnah for innovation, and leaving the people of insight for the people of desires. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala takes away these blessings from them. Then Shaykh Abdul Rahman Yasi'li rahimahullah ta'ala he continued by saying وَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا غَيَّرَ الْعِبَادِ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ مِنَ الْمَعْصِيَةِ فَانْتَقَلُوا إِلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Similarly, if people change their sinful condition towards the obedience of Allah غَيَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا كَانُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الشَّقَاءِ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَالسُرُورِ وَالْغِبْطَةِ وَالرَّحْمَةِ Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will change their situation of misery which they used to live in to be a situation of goodness, khayr and a situation of happiness and a situation of mercy O slaves, this is for every single one of us male or female whomsoever moves away from evil and sins wasting time towards the obedience of Allah then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will take away our misery and Allah Azza wa Jal will place in our hearts joy and understanding and happiness and mercy. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala He said next, وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا But when Allah wants to punish a people with hardship or an affair that they dislike, فَإِنَّ إِرَادَتَهُ لَا بُدْ أَنْ تَنْفُذَ فِيهِمْ Then his will will inevitably befall them turning away from طُعَة towards مَعْسِيَة leaving obedience and going towards sins knowing the things which Allah loves knowing those things which pleases Allah but following our desires and following doubts and following the call of the shaitan we turn towards the disobedient things displeasing Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so Allah's punishment is inevitable as Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he said فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ then there can be no turning back of this punishment Sheikh Abdul Rahman Al-Si'di rahimahullah ta'ala he said وَلَا أَحَدَ يَنْفَعُهُ مِنْ Then no one can protect from it from the punishment of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala And Allah He said next وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ مِنْ وَال And they will not find anyone besides Allah as protectors and helpers My noble believing brothers and sisters May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala have mercy and bless all of you Allah Azza wa Jal clearly informs us that he would change our situation of difficulties and misery into a situation of ease and obedience. However, the question is, are we planning to change ourselves? O young men, O sisters, O fathers, O husbands and wives, are we planning to change ourselves? This is the obvious question for every single one of us. What am I doing to change my current condition from sins to obedience, from wrong to good? What am I doing to receive these blessings from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala? What am I required to do to make my situation better? This is the question. My noble believing brothers and sisters, I want all of us to contemplate. The beautiful statement of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala La yuslihu akhir hadhihi al-umma illa bima aslaha awwalaha And the latter part of this umma meaning the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cannot be rectified no matter what our situation is of difficulties whether it be economics 
whether it be social affairs, family affairs, whatever difficulties we face together as brothers and sisters in this latter part of this ummah, know that it cannot be rectified except by that which rectified the first part of this ummah, except by that which rectified the lives of the companions radiallahu anhum. My noble believing brothers and sisters, what was it that rectified their lives? They faced difficulties and trials more severe than us. They held on to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his noble and pure messenger. O Muslims, let us look to ourselves carefully. Every individual, where do we look for rectification when our affairs becomes restricted? One of the most recent examples and restrictions and hardships that we face as believers together was the oppression of the Palestinian people. The oppression of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Who did we turn to for help and reliance? The people, they sought help from the likes of Hamas disobedient people, people whose goals are politics and leadership, people who are disobedient and hungry for position, people who disobey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who clearly turn away from the best way, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What about those of us who expected help from superpowers? Or those of us, how many who turn towards social media, posting foolishness as though this can bring rectification and this could correct the affairs of our brothers and sisters. O oh, Muslims, how many of us truly believe and understand that the rectification of our affairs is in the hands of Allah wa ta'ala and the means we must take for Allah's hands to enter our affairs is iman and obedience. This is the only way that we're going to receive his aid. This is the only way that we're going to come out of our difficult times and hardships. O oh, Muslims, fear Allah and know that success and honor would never come to us through politics or secularism or being dependent upon a superpower or reliance upon devils and evil ways. But honor is inevitable for the one who has iman the one who fears Allah, the one who follows the best example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who has began preparation for his departure from this temporary world, the one who fears his reckoning before Allah. And remember, from whatever remains of our time in this world, the statement of the most wise, in Allah. لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم that Allah Tabaraka wa Taala will not change the condition of a people until they themselves change that condition. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم من البيان والذكر الحكيم أقول هذا القول وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد هو مسلم is there any from amongst us who has taken account of himself? Is there any from amongst us who has adhered to the statement of Al Farooq Umar ibn Al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an hasibu an fusakum qabla an tuhasabu? Take account of yourselves before you are taken into account for. Is there any from amongst us who realize that we have fallen short? as it relates to the rights of Allah Taala, and as it relates to the rights of His Messenger, the Sunnah 
of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as it relates to the rights of the people and the rights of Islam O Muslims fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and fulfill the rights of Allah fulfill the rights of his slaves and fulfill the rights of Allah's creation O Muslims how many of us have taken account of our family members our wives our children and directed them to establish the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. How many of us have taught the manners that comes with Islam, the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the manners that will make them and us successful both in this life and in the life of the hereafter. O Imams, leaders of the respective communities, who from amongst us have taken time to look over our people and enjoying the good and forbid the evil. Who from amongst us has taken the time to look after the poor and needy? Who from amongst us has made that full commitment to work for Allah's deen without any political agendas or financial and economic gains or greed for power and leadership? Have we not heard the statement of Allah wa ta'ala? Who is better in speech? Min man da'a ilallah than the one who invites to Allah wa amila saliha and he does righteous deeds wa qala innani min al muslimin and he says I am from the believers I am from those who submit O leaders of the respective communities fi Allah azza wa jal fi Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as it relates to your people and know that the rectification of our communities is not found in political affairs and is not found in the accumulation of wealth and is not found in following the people of desires the rectification of our communities and our country and our society and our families is only found in the obedience of Allah the makhraj from every difficulty is only in the obedience of Allah and this obedience of Allah wa ta'ala leads to Allah's punishment and it is upon us as leaders to seek beneficial knowledge at the hands of Ahlul Ilm, the righteous, upright scholars. This is how we rectify by referring people back to the book and the Sunnah and the way of the companions radiallahu anhum and not by following our whims and desires and not by fooling the people. My brothers and sisters, it is incumbent upon all of us to answer these questions. And the answers are going to be Imma bin Nafi or Imma bil Ithbat. Either we have negated these obligations or we have established them with the tawfiq, the success of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. However, if we have negated these obligations, then there is no doubt that we have fallen short as it relates to that which Allah has made wajib upon all of us. My noble believing brothers and sisters, may Allah bless and protect all of you. Reflect on the statements of the Prophet wasallam, which is found in the collection of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim and the authority of the noble companion Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. Qullukum ra'in وَقُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولُ Every one of you is a guardian and every one of you is responsible for your flock. فَالْإِمَامْ رَاعٍ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولُ So the Imam, he is responsible and he will be questioned about his subjects. وَالرَّجُلُ الرَّاعٍ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولُ And the man, he is a guardian to his family. He is responsible for them. وَالْمَرْعَةُ رَعِيَ عَلَى بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا وَهِيَ مَسْؤُولَ And a woman, she is the guardian of her husband's household and she is responsible for it. وَالْعَبْدُ رَاعٍ عَلَى مَالِ سَيِّدِهِ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولَ And his slave is a guardian of his master's wealth, his master's property and he is responsible for it. Ala fa kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ul. Beware, 
Is it not that all of you are guardians and are responsible for your people, for your responsibilities? O oh, believers, fi Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, fi Allah azza wa jal, and know that our situation needs tarkiz, it needs concentration, it needs obedience, and it needs us to take the steps to rectify ourselves. O oh, husbands, rectify your homes. O oh, men, rectify your homes and your family members. O oh, young ones, rectify yourselves. Turn towards the obedience of Allah and beware of every distraction in this life, every evil way and every call of the shaitan and the callers to the hellfire. O oh, woman, fi Allah azza wa jal, as it relates to the houses of your husbands and as it relates to your children. O oh, Imams, fi Allah azza wa jal, fi Allah azza wa jal, as it relates to your authority and as it relates to your responsibility of teaching your community members and rectifying the Muslims wherever you may be. Fi Allah azza wa jal, and if it is that you do not have what it takes to rectify then there is no shame to move away from this responsibility because you're going to be questioned about it. Fi Allah Azza wa Jal, O believers, and remember that day when we will all stand before Him and be questioned about our flocks and our responsibilities.